Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking one final look at the New York governor's race as it's an election that's rapidly been developing over the past few weeks or so. There's been a lot of momentum heading in the Republicans direction and ultimately it seems to be closing the gap in the polling. Of course, Lee Zeldin currently is now only down about five points in RCP. I believe it's 4.8 respectively. So he's really closing in in a state that should be deep blue uh, basically all of the time. This is New York, after all, one of the bluest states in the country. So a lot of interesting developments here. Of course, we're going to take a look at some of the polls. We're going to take a look at some of the previous New York governor's elections to sort of analyze uh, where this one will sort of fit in with all the others. And then finally, we're going to take a look at the election shuffler and sort of analyze what a Lee Zeldin victory could look like and whether or not it's realistically possible this cycle. So we're going to get into all of that in just a second. But first, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing down below, liking this video if you enjoy. Also, link down below to our election night live stream. We're going to start that at 7 p.m. Eastern on November 8th, Election Day. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. So if we take a look at some of the latest polls out of New York so far, Kathy Hochul has an eight-point lead in the latest poll out of Emerson. I guess if you uh, put leaners or something like that, it ends out to be 54 or 45. I'm not exactly sure why there's two different ones, but uh, the latest numbers are extremely close nonetheless. Trafalgar released a poll that essentially has Lee Zeldin and Kathy Hochul tied, although Trafalgar does have a very interesting... Uh, history when it comes to polling because in some Rust Belt states they're very accurate and in some other states uh, they're really off the ball though I think there's a few suspicious polls out of Trafalgar this cycle that have had races like Washington Senate being a lot closer than I would expect them to be and I would argue that this poll is a lot closer than I'd expect New York to be but there does seem to be somewhat of a trend we have data for progress uh, having this as only a 12 point race which is still incredibly close in the state of New York uh, I, data for progress is probably one of the most accurate pollsters in my opinion. Uh, and you have a number of other polls, civics that has this race uh, in low double digits, of course. So this is really close, relatively speaking, by New York standards. And the RCP average is just plus 4.8 for Kathy Hochul. 538's average is plus 6 for Kathy Hochul. So this is an extremely precarious position to be as a weak Democratic incumbent when you're in a Republican wavier because Kathy Hochul is not a strong incumbent. She's not incredibly popular. She doesn't really have any major accomplishments to her name, uh, really besides uh, getting this deal for the Buffalo Bills Stadium uh, in her home area. But that's about it in terms of major accomplishments. Uh, obviously, the right wing in New York is really not a fan of her. They're very energized to get her out of office. Of course, the wavier and the down ballot coattails that Lee Zeldin has will probably help House candidates in the state of New York. But this will be the closest New York governor's race at least since 1994. So almost 30 years. And, you know, that's why it's getting so much attention. You've seen a lot of big Republican names like Glenn Youngkin, uh, Ron DeSantis come out to the state of New York to stump for Lee Zeldin because they're trying to energize the Republican base, because in New York, like most states, elections come down to turnout. And if the Republican base turns out and the Democratic base stays home, there's a good chance that Republicans could pull one of the biggest political upsets uh, probably in history. So, you know, looking at these results in particular, it is pretty surprising that the polling is so close. Lee Zeldin's consistently polling in the low to mid 40s. Uh, that's really good for a Republican, especially when you consider the fact that early on in this race, Lee Zeldin could barely crack, uh, you know, 36%. There's one uh, internal poll that I guess had him up, but, you know, that poll's pretty much an outlier, though. The rest of the aggregate uh, was, you know, had, I think Kathy Oka at one point was up by 18 points, and now it's really, really narrowed up to just four. So, you know, New York is a deep blue state, though. This is a state that Joe Biden won by 23 percentage points. It's an area where traditional Republican strongholds like Long Island went to Joe Biden by a decent margin when you factor in Nassau and Suffolk County. Upstate New York went to Joe Biden by a decent margin as well. I mean, upstate is normally thought of as the very Republican part of New York, but it's not that red in comparison to rural areas in other states like its southern neighbor of Pennsylvania, which is much more Republican than upstate New York. And of course, New England is uh, very blue when it comes to rural areas. But, you know, this is a state that's extremely, extremely, extremely difficult for Republicans to win, even in the best case scenario. And right now it looks like 2022 could be the best case scenario for them. And they still might end up short by about 10 points. Now, I'm not saying a win in New York is impossible. It's on the table. That's why there's so much energy and money being put into the state. 
But realistically speaking, as we get into the actual numbers, it's extremely hard to give Republicans a flat out majority because since there's only two candidates on the ballot, the winner needs 50 plus one. That's what they need to win this state. And in New York, that's incredibly hard for the Republicans, extremely easy for Democrats to do. I mean, especially when you look at these margins in the city, which mind you was the only part of the state that actually trended more Republican from 2016 to 2020. But even then, you have boroughs like the Queens, Trump only gets 27%, 22% Republicans only getting 16% in the Bronx, 12 in Manhattan. So, you know, in order for Lee Zeldin to win uh, statewide, he needs at least 30, 32% in the city in order to make up ground throughout the rest of the state. And of course, he needs the rest of the state to show up in pretty big numbers as well. Of course, in 2018, the last time New York had a governor's election, Andrew Cuomo defeated Mark Molinaro by about 23 percentage points, a very similar margin to what we saw in the 2020 election. Uh, Mark Molinaro did much better upstate than most Republicans tend to do nowadays because, I mean, he's from Dutchess County, but all across upstate New York, he overperformed Trump's margins in basically all of these counties. He almost won Onondaga County with six points short. Uh, got close in Monroe and Erie County as well. So a lot of these, even these more urban upstate counties, Mark Molinaro was very competitive. And yet, because he did so poorly downstate, it really didn't change this race all that much. These results are basically the same as the 2016 election. In fact, Mark Molinaro, I think, did slightly worse than Donald Trump in terms of overall vote percentage. And that's really because he did worse on Long Island. He lost Suffolk County by about five points. He lost Nassau County by a safe margin, so on and so forth. He even lost Staten Island. So, you know, this was a really bad result for Republicans across the board. But upstate, uh, Republicans did a lot better. And Lee Zeldin really needs to thread that line doing really well downstate and really well upstate. Lee Zeldin is from Long Island, so it's expected he's going to do fairly well there, especially since Long Island is sort of a swing region in the state anyway. And given the national environment that we're seeing, Republicans are probably going to win both Suffolk and Nassau County. It's just really a question of by how much and whether or not that's enough to offset uh, however good Kathy Hochul is going to do in the four boroughs of New York City. Of course, we're excluding Staten Island in that. So when we go back to 2014, this was a red wave year around the country. Republicans gained seats in the House. They won the Senate. But of course, in the governorship, uh, this was still a landslide victory for Andrew Cuomo. Cuomo winning by over 13 points. Now, mind you, this was actually a lot closer than a lot of the polls had this race. I think Cuomo was up by nearly 20 points in RCP. He only won by 13. But there was a significant third party factor taking votes away from Andrew Cuomo in this instance, Howie Hawkins of the Green Party getting nearly 5% of the vote. Rob Astorino only getting 40.6. And this was a really good year for the GOP. Andrew Cuomo was more popular at this point. He was a pretty popular governor. So this was sort of the effect of the wave year, I suppose. And of course, Cuomo was not really popular in upstate New York. Things like the SAFE Act, other policy proposals that he uh, passed while in his first term as governor were not really popular upstate. Downstate, he did a lot better. He narrowly lost Suffolk County, but of course he won Nassau by over eight points and did extremely well in the five boroughs of New York City, once again winning Staten Island, this time by a safe margin. So Cuomo was an incredibly powerful Democrat in New York. When it came to his electoral prowess, he was always able to overperform. He had his coalition. He was always able to get his voters out, particularly in downstate New York, which really liked Cuomo in particular. Now that Cuomo's out of the picture, you have Kathy Hochul. And we haven't had a gubernatorial election without Andrew Cuomo since before 2010. So it's been a long time since another Democrat has been on the ballot. And quite frankly, Kathy Hochul does not have the political strength as Andrew Cuomo, nor does she have the strong coalition and base that Andrew Cuomo had, especially in the city. I mean, to win Staten Island every time you've run for statewide office is pretty impressive because Staten Island is a very red borough of New York City. So, you know, looking at these results, obviously Republicans have done very poorly statewide. Although in 2010, they nearly won the comptroller's office, but they still lost that by four points. But taking a look at this year, one frame of reference for the governor's race is the New York City mayoral race. Now, Curtis Sliwa was a candidate that had name recognition, but didn't really have uh, any real funding. And he was able to get 28% of the vote in New York City. Eric Adams got 67. Uh, in order for Lee Zeldin to win, like I said, he needs around 30 to 32%, depending on the turnout in the rest of the state. 
Now, one good sign for Lee Zeldin, I don't have it pulled up in this video, but the early vote in the Bronx is down. In fact, it's almost equal to the early vote in Staten Island, which Staten Island only has about 500,000 people. The Bronx has about 1.4 million. So huge difference in population, but obviously the Republicans are very energized. It would be presumed that the early vote in Staten Island is going uh, at least more so in favor of Zeldin than Hochul. Uh, than you would have in these other boroughs. So that is a good sign for the Republicans. Although enthusiasm in Manhattan is also up. So that's kind of interesting too, because obviously this is an area that's going to go heavily to Kathy Hochul or whoever the Democrat would have been. So, you know, Curtis Slewa was able to get about 36% of the vote in Queens. Uh, that's probably what Zeldin would need. He probably needs a bit more. He probably needs about 38%, which is a huge, that is a tall order, especially in a general election like 2022. This isn't a mayoral race. This isn't a local race with very low turnout. This is going to be a much higher turnout midterm. So it's extremely hard to get those sort of numbers as a Republican. Of course, in Brooklyn, uh, he's going to need like 27%. He really needs 30, honestly, which I don't even think that's doable. But uh, let's say he gets 30% there. The Bronx, uh, you know, he probably needs 25, 26. And if we pull up the election shuffler, I've done some of the numbers already. I've adjusted the turnout in New York City to make it lower than the rest of the state. Even Manhattan, I dropped uh, relative to the rest of New York. And of course, I gave uh, Lee Zeldin 36% in Queens. I gave him 27% in Brooklyn, 22% in the Bronx. And then Manhattan, I gave him 19%, Staten Island, 64 And adjusting the rest of the state, moving the rest of the state about 15 points in favor of Zeldin. And, you know, moving Long Island, giving him about a 16-point margin of victory in Suffolk and around a 9-point margin of victory in Nassau you get a 53 to 46 result for the Democrat. And that, of course, is giving him Onondaga County, which is a swing county down ballot, but let's say Zeldin wins it for the sake of this by around two points. You give him Monroe County by about four, which is usually a low turnout county. A lot of the precincts in Rochester really don't turn out. That's one of the reasons why in 2014, you saw Rob Astorino win this county, even though this is a county that Trump lost by only 20 points in 2020. And of course, Buffalo, I gave to Zeldin by about six. This is Kathy Hochul's home region. And yet, despite that, this is still what the result is. You get a 53-46 result for the Democrats. So you would need a catastrophic shift in downstate New York. You would need Westchester. You know, you would need somewhere around 42% of the vote in Westchester County. Uh, you would really need a Nassau County plus 15 margin, realistically, to win statewide. Uh, and if you give Zeldin that, uh, you know, that puts Hochul at about 42 and now, so, you know, you're still at 47.4%. If you give a 20 point margin of victory in Suffolk, you're still at 46.1%. It's incredibly, incredibly hard to make the numbers actually work in Zeldin's favor, which is one of the reasons why I've had this race as likely Democrat for so long. I think Zeldin is going to do very well, both upstate and downstate, but I don't think it's going to be enough for him to pull this victory off. And again, I could be wrong. Uh, maybe in a week or so, we'll find out that Zeldin is the first Republican elected governor of New York since Pataki. But as of right now, uh, it's incredibly, incredibly difficult to to make these numbers work in Zeldin's favor unless you have catastrophic uh, turnout loss in the boroughs of the city. And of course, you would need Zeldin to have a massive overperformance. You'd need Zeldin to get 30% in Brooklyn, even like 40% in Queens or something like that. You're talking like a Miami-Dade style shift in the New York City boroughs in order for this to actually work. So it's very hard to get Zeldin over the finish line. It's not impossible. I still think there's an above zero chance that Zeldin could win this race, but it's still very, very low just because of the math of New York State. It's very, very hard to shift these counties in a way that Zeldin actually wins. And again, if Zeldin does win, I'll certainly analyze that result and compare it to this analysis. But as of right now, I still think Kathy Hochul is going to win the governorship. I think she'll probably win by about 10 points, uh, given uh, how inelastic a lot of parts of New York State are at this point. This isn't 1994 again. And, and mind you, George Pataki didn't even win with a majority of the vote. He only got 48% of the vote. And this was the map. This is how red the rest of the state of New York was. And you're not really going to see New York this red um, anytime soon, I think, especially even this year in particular. So while there's a lot of attention being put into New York, while a lot of people think it's possible for Zeldin to pull an upset, uh, I'm still of the opinion that Zeldin will probably lose this race by about 10 points. 
but he'll end up bringing a lot of down ballot Republicans over the finish line in contested congressional races. So for Republicans, even a Zeldin loss is still a win because they're going to have a lot of down ballot coattails, a lot of competitive state Senate races where Republicans will probably sweep. You'll have uh, congressional races, uh, state assembly races where Republicans will be brought over the finish line where they previously wouldn't have. So anyway, that's my final analysis on New York. As I said, it's not impossible for Zeldin to win. I give it about a 5% chance. Uh, polls are narrowing up, but I really do think the polls are going to be underestimating Democratic support, especially in New York City. I uh, could be wrong, obviously, but uh, comment your thoughts down below, obviously. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if you enjoyed. And as always, again, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.